Today I'll be going through a Sega Genesis Model 1 S video, stereo audio, and 10 MHz overclock mod and install from start to finish. Let's get started. To start out the mod, I'm going to be jumping right in by building our S-Video circuit. You can actually purchase these online for around $20 pre-built, but I prefer to build them from scratch for a fraction of the price. Here's a look at the scratch circuit board I start with, and the cut piece that will house my circuit. I then sand down the sides and get it ready for my components. The components are very straightforward and easy to find. I start by mocking up my pieces and then soldering them into place. And here's a look at the final circuit with proper input and output wires. Now that the circuit is good, it's time to disassemble the Genesis, but this thing is dirty, so let's put on some gloves. Here's a look at the rear, also really dirty, and here is where we'll be drilling our holes for those connectors and toggle switch. We will start by removing the six bottom screws and pulling off the lid gently so we can disconnect the LED first. Next up, we'll be making our way around the motherboard to unscrew all these screws that are holding it into place. We will then remove the heat shield so that we can access the Sony chip below to pull our S-Video lines from. Here's the chip we'll be soldering to, and we are most interested in pin 15 and 16. But before we start, let's secure our circuit in place with some industrial 3M double-sided tape. We cut it to the size of the circuit and secure it off to the side of the chip. Now that it's secure, we start to route our lines into place and solder in pin 15 and pin 16 onto our chip. The circuit we built also needs power, so we will be pulling that from a nearby voltage regulator and solder it into place. I'm a huge fan of clean circuits, so you will see me always using heat shrink to keep these things organized. Next up, we can focus on soldering our output leads onto our S-Video connector. So far from our circuit, we have sync, chroma, and we just need a ground wire. I will be tapping the ground connection from a nearby capacitor and securing the lines together. The sync, chroma, and ground lines are then soldered onto the S-Video connection. And here's a look at the finished connector. Before we go any further, let's test the output to make sure it's working properly. Everything looks good. Next, let's work on wiring up our stereo audio. For this, I prefer to pull audio from the front headphone jack. This gives us clean stereo audio with the added benefit of volume control using our stock slider. The solder points we are tapping from are already amplified, so we can just solder wire directly from the board to the RCA jacks. The only additional wire we will need is a good ground point from which I will pull from this capacitor. It's always a good idea to secure your wires for good practice. Let's route them into place and start working on our overclock mod. Just like the first circuit, I start with a scratch board and cut out the size I need to hold my oscillator chip. The chip I always use is this Fox 10 MHz 4-pin oscillator. For the circuit, I start by soldering the chip into place and finish by soldering the leads to each pin. The overclock chip will be wired to pin 15, so I start by heating up the pin and lifting it away from the through hole. Once it is free, I bend it back into position, clean up the end, and tin it so that it's ready for the oscillator leads. We can now secure our board and begin to wire it all up. The oscillator will need 5 volt power as well as ground, so we will be pulling it from nearby capacitors. Next up is wiring the on-on toggle switch so that we can switch between overclock and standard clock. This allows us to always revert in cases that the overclock causes glitches, or if we want to play 32x games, it's as easy as flipping a switch. We solder a lead from pin 15 and another lead from the through hole. The final lead comes from our output of the oscillator, which makes a total of three. So now all that is left is to wire them up to the toggle switch and heat shrink them to keep things clean. Once they are all looking good, we can shift back to finishing our audio RCAs. I start by soldering in the ground connection line between them, and then I work my way through connecting the left and right leads and finish them off by heat shrinking them. That brings us back around to test time. This time we test S-Video, left and right audio, and our overclock toggle. I personally test Sonic the Hedgehog because it works really well with the overclock and the sound and visuals are amazing.
everything looks and sounds perfect. Next up is prepping the shell for the holes we are about to drill into it. But before we do that, let's go ahead and switch out that boring LED. And let's go ahead and clean this thing up. It's finally back in order and looking good. I'm going to start by prepping the rear plastic for connectors by removing these plastic spines and sanding them down. I use painter's tape to mask off the drill hole areas and carefully mark where my connectors will go. Two things are very important. Always measure multiple times before drilling and start small and work up from there. To achieve the perfect size, I use a graduated drill bit that cuts evenly and allows you to work up to the size you need. Once the holes are the right size, I peel the tape away and start reassembling the Genesis back together. For the heat sink, I trim back the area near the port so that there aren't any clearance issues. To permanently hold the connectors into place, I turn to Gorilla Epoxy. After mixing it carefully, I place the connectors into place and patiently apply epoxy. The epoxy cures for 24 hours and as an added hold, I apply a thin layer of hot glue. And here's a look at the final assembled ports. And here's a look at the custom LED. The Sega Genesis Model 1 has to be one of my favorite consoles to mod. You can pack so many upgrades into it, and every one of those upgrades adds to the Genesis library. If you're looking to have this done to your console, you can find me at dvgamerepair.com or if you're in the Colorado Springs area, you can find my offices at Raven Retro Video Games. As for my channel, I'm going to be posting more mod and repair videos to come, so keep checking back and a like and subscribe are always appreciated. I hope you guys enjoyed this one as much as I did. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys later.